All right. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. Um, just to give some context on uh, why we are here. Uh, so I'm Parveen. I'm from Google. And I'm joined by Jacob from Facebook. Yep. Um, so we've been talking about uh, kind of um, Nix and what interfaces we need from Nix so that it's easier for us to adopt them. And we thought it will be uh, good to make a proposal to OCP. So we'll uh, kind of go through that. Um, so why do we care about the NIC? Um, I think most of you know this. But uh, NICs are core to the data center and edge applications. Uh, with the you know, end of Moore's law, the accelerators on the NICs become even more critical to the efficiency in our data centers. Um, and as we try to squeeze more out of servers or attach different kinds of accelerators like GPUs, TPUs, um, you know, SSD appliances, it's critical uh, that we kind of build uh, this kind of infrastructure so that we can compose a machine shape uh, from arbitrary resources within the data center. So not everything is directly attached to your machine anymore. And NICs are critical to enabling uh, that critical, uh, you know, composable infrastructure. Uh, and what's hard for us, you know, as hyperscalers, both Facebook, Google, and probably others, I think it's very hard for, for vendors to really understand uh, what we need. You know, what does it take to, to operate, um, you know, at, at the scale that we do? And, you know, what, what are our specific requirements? Uh, similarly, for us, it's hard to just take an off-the-shelf NIC and, you know, put, it, put that in our fleet because these NICs come with proprietary interfaces. And there's probably a complex set of features that NICs implement for other use cases, more enterprise customers, that aren't directly applicable to us, but they nevertheless slow down development uh, or have bugs that affect our deployments. So that's really, I think, what this is about. Hey, can we enable, can we get together and create standardized interfaces and enable more innovation in this space? Um, so here's kind of the rough outline of the proposal we would like to make. You know, let's standardize the APIs um, for NIC hardware features. Uh, if those APIs are consistent across different NICs, that will make it easier for us to port our software uh, onto different NICs. And let's establish meaningful benchmarks uh, so that we can validate that the NICs actually do what we want uh, or what we expect them to do. And to keep this proposal focused, we're saying let's focus on just the NetDev interface which is the interface that's exposed to the workloads or the transport layers uh, from, from the NICs, right? So there's other areas. NICs are very complex now. I'm sure you've all seen DPUs and all sorts of other additions to NIC-like cards, right? Um, but we are saying, let's focus on the foundational features, which is the NIC and the accelerators uh, that, that are present on the NIC. Uh, you may have programmable cores on the NICs or other programmable logic or FPGAs um, where you can run your control plane or slow path or something else. We'll leave that uh, kind of out of this uh, initial uh, proposal. So this is primarily focused on you know, the fast path fe features and things we would like to see in the accelerators on the NICs themselves. Uh, to give you an idea of, you know, what would we like to standardize? You know, here's a set of example features that we think, you know, our requirements in, in our environments are different than what uh, a typical enterprise may care about, you know. And we'll go through these. Um, uh, this is just an initial list to seed the discussion. Uh, and as we work through, if this does become a, you know, a standard, uh, through a forum, then we'll, we'll look at other areas as well. Uh, so the first one is flow steering. Um, you know, the transport stacks of today are, are not the same as they were when they were designed, you know, 40 years ago uh, with TCP IP. We would like to be able to run 
the transport stack in user mode completely, you know, quick and, uh, you know, Google Snap are great examples of that. Or on, let's say, a DPU, 100% offloaded, or some kind of, um, you know, uh, mix in between. So we want all these scenarios to be supported so that we can steer, you know, wh where the packets go. Um, you know, they could go to some app, what we consider these application queues. And then the applications are free to uh, run their own transport protocols. Uh, you know, we have Van Jacobson on our team. He says, you know, the fact that TCP IP lives in the kernel is almost by accident. If we could do over, we would do things differently now. Uh, you know, and this is, I think, if we had the right flow steering rules in the NICs, that enables that uh, freedom for us. Uh, both Facebook and us are interested in enabling CPU memory bypass for scenarios like GPUs, TPUs, or SSDs. So you can still take advantage of the hardened TCP stack, uh, but land data directly from the NIC onto your peripheral devices as opposed to going through uh, the host memory for everything. Uh, and there's specific features we would like to see in the NICs in order to enable these scenarios at scale. Um, queues, again, um, we don't need to have, you know, creating too many queues or mapping queues to too many cores creates contention and hurts performance in many cases. So there's specific uh, uh, features we would like to see to limit those and then prioritize uh, things across queues. Traffic engineering, that's another feature which is, uh, you know, specific to our environments. I mean, at the, at the fundamental level, traffic engineering is about two things. You're deciding where the packets go, which is which path they take through the network, and then at what rate, you know, how many bytes per second are you sending on each path. Uh, and the way we do this in our environment is using two things, you know, encapsulation of uh, some kind, and then using uh, a timing wheel in, in Linux kernel, this uh, EDT proposal. And this set of features is really critical for us to operate kind of our van infrastructure because we, we really, uh, you know, we have traffic going at different priorities at different rates. Uh, along different paths, uh, and all of this is controlled from the end host, from the NICs uh, on the host. Um, inline crypto is another example. We all like TLS, but it's not necessarily uh, very offload friendly. So at, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's various reasons why it's not you know, if you have a single server that's handling millions of connections, um, TLS offload or existing ways of doing cryptography don't necessarily scale. Um, so we have a custom uh, uh, crypto protocol that, that uh, you know, Google deploys internally that has O of 1 scaling. Um, that's not necessarily possible in every hardware implementation. So maybe we need some kind of hybrid that does uh, you know, uh, keeps top hitting flows in the in the NIC memory, and then uh, you know the others uh, uh, it can rely on the host or or you know fall back. Uh, but that's an example. Um, both Facebook and us are interested in enabling offloads for quick. Um, and once the data is encrypted, the existing protocols treat this as all or nothing. So, you, you know, uh, we lose telemetry once that happens. And it, it's very critical that we be able to uh, specify what payload to encrypt and what headers or payload uh, to keep in the open. And this has been critical for us for handling security issues uh, while, um, while still getting critical uh, telemetry. Uh, so, uh, Google has a proprietary protocol, like I mentioned, and we are going to open it uh, pretty soon so that uh, any NIC vendor uh, can implement this. And the goal here is to really get TLS-like scalability and security, so you have per flow or per session keys um, while uh, being offload friendly. And now I'd like to hand off to Jakub for 
the next two features. So uh, two more areas of interest for us. Um, first of, uh, we are investing a lot of time and money into innovating in the transport protocols. And if you look at um, the new transport protocols and congestion control algorithms that are coming out, and a lot of them depend on having access to precise packet timing information to reason about the congestion of the network. So um, the example on the slide is from the Google Swift paper. Um, the Swift algorithm basically tries to um, estimate the congestion of the fabric by measuring the nick to nick delay. So for every um, packet, we effectively have to have um, departure and arrival timestamps that we can use to calculate the, the change in, in latency across the fabric. And from that, we can derive how congested the fabric is. Um, so, some of uh, a lot of, uh, Swift, apart from doing the um, fabric congestion calculation, also does uh, congestion of the end host, which is sort of um, corresponding to how loaded the server is. When uh, it can calculate the delay from the time that the request arrives in the NIC receive queues to the moment that is actually processed by the server. And obviously, the longest, the longer the time from the receive uh, reception at the NIC to the processing is, the longer the application queue, and therefore the more loaded the server. Um, I'm differentiating between the two because for the fabric delay, we are using NIC time on both ends. So whatever, if we distribute time through PTP or any other um, time uh, distribution protocol, we will have the timestamps basically um, aligned. But for the host case, there's additional. Um, challenge because the NIC and the, and the host have separate clocks. So we also need to be able to synchronize the NIC clock to the host clock. Um, next area that is important to us is obviously making sure that we can run all of those NICs at scale. We have a very high variety of applications that we run and a high variety of platforms that we run on. Um, so it's really important for us that we can um, automate all of the operations and all of the performance analysis and all of the investigations so that uh, if anything happens to the application, we are able to dive down and figure out what is wrong uh, at the NIC level and also be able to read um, data uh, from the NIC to feedback into the application so that the application can change its uh, parameters of whatever way it uses the transport protocol to make more effective use and obviously not not run into bottlenecks in the NIC hardware. So access to um, device health information and any sort of telemetry that relates to the NIC data path is of great importance. And with the variety of hardware that we deploy, the standardization in this area would also be very much appreciated. Um, when we, for all the uh, areas of interest that we talked about previously, uh, we would hope that we can work with the community to create the acceptance tests and uh, standardize benchmarks so that we can have help the vendors um, target the right kind of conditions that we see in, work, in production workloads. And at the same time, make sure that whatever implementation there are uh, basically uh, um, conform with the, to the APIs that we, that we have defined. And last but not least, um, the health management of the fleet is uh, increasingly important, obviously, with the numbers of servers that we need to manage. Um, we are having a lot of, um, well, we need to deal with problems that are not uh, visible at smaller scale. And uh, silent data corruption is an uh, important issue to us. So any um, innovation in the area of self-tests uh, and device health monitoring, both to be able to catch um, device uh, issues while they're running the workload and to execute self-tests offline to make sure that um, with uh, features like checksums obviously being offloaded, and if we move to crypto also being offloaded um, from the time that the NIC does all the validation of the data stream to the time that it actually arrives in the CPU, there is potential for the data stream to be corrupted and we need the ways to, to catch that and basically replace that hardware. With that, um, we would like to invite everybody who's interested to join um, the conversation. If you are interested in this sort of topics, uh, both from the vendor or as a user, please reach out to us and uh, 
Voici yeah. votre... Uh, yeah, really, this is, uh, uh, you know, see if, they, if there is enough community interest in it. I see Omar is here uh, from Facebook as well. Um, if, if there is enough interest, then we would like to formalize this as a uh, track within OCP and, and, and standardize some of these features. With that, we're open to questions, comments, feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, uh, so the question was, uh, do we already have test methodologies that we can, uh, um, you know, uh, start off with as a first contribution? We do have, we, we are working on some um, of the tests that we are running, trying to make sure, uh, make them available, and also thinking about uh, providing tests for the Linux kernel APIs effectively, which we depend on the most as a contribution to the kernel. So I think those would be the two avenues that we would tackle first. Yeah, I think that lines up uh, with what we're thinking. Uh, yeah, there's another question. Yeah. So, uh, as a part of standardization we are talking about, is basically simplifying Linux NetDev offering a bit from an understand, but over the years it has got a really complicated, it's kind of built on the mm -hmm. So, so the first one is uh, simplifying the net dev offload interface. That's one aspect. The other one is with this new offload, standardizing those right from the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. uh, before like implementation. I mean, working hand to hand with the implementations as they are getting there. That has always been the challenge from the offload stack uh, standpoint. So, are you considering those two as a part of this sta whole community effort standardization? I see. So the, um, with respect to simplification of NetDev, I think that can certainly be part of it, but we would uh, have to evaluate whether you know, that's the first thing we want to take on or, or do it incrementally as we go on based on you know, feature by feature. That, that, that's kind of what I would think, but then again, it will depend on the community on how we want to tackle that. Uh, but going feature by feature is probably how that's going to go. Yeah, I would only add that uh, we would certainly hope that if we are involved earlier in the process, rather than trying to consume features that were developed by the vendors, um, we can make sure that there is more sort of common frameworks inside the kernel that uh, are well understood and can be shared instead of everything being implemented by every vendor multiple times. Anything else? Just for the f people who are in the room, show of hands, like how many of you would be interested in you know, this becoming a standard? Okay, I see a few, few hands going up, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Great, okay, with that, I think we are done. Thank you.